Good morning. It is a gift to have you here at Trinity Parish this morning. Um, these flowers, as lovely as they are, um, are given in memory and in love um, of uh, Frank Lang. Um, so if you see Suzanne today, um, give her an extra hug. So we worship as we live in remembrance of our baptism. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God, God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror, it's all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior, Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O oh, Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he 
he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. reading from Romans. <clears throat> Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, 
we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Whoever loves father more than me 
is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. Their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. into the world. 
And it is our calling that we continually share this good news with those we encounter. Something holy also happened last Saturday. <clears throat> about a half dozen Trinity parishioners gathered to talk about Eucharist and participation in liturgy and what that might that be. So they're Eucharistic ministers, visitors, and um, lectures that, that showed up. And as we were conversing, they watched as the Holy Spirit guided me into sharing words that I believe were hope-filled and compassionate. I hadn't expected saying it. And I was standing right there. And the next thing I knew, there were words that were burning within my bones and coming out. It was a holy response to things that had been shared deep in their hearts. I wonder, have you ever been on the receiving end? Where you experience the illumination of God's grace, mercy, and hope in situations where there was lament, <clears throat> anguish, or grief. One place I've noticed that within this community recently was through the participation of the three sacred dialogues that we have. Attendees at the last calendar planning meeting asked to have these conversations despite their reluctance to do Prior to the actual dialogue, some people expressed some who came only to listen and reminded us they had only come to listen, were compelled to speak. And though I approached them later, my hunch is they also <coughs> in their bones. Others have approached and said, that worked. We talked about what we needed to be talking about. Can we use that model and have more such conversations? For you see, everyone's voice and participation as we cultivate the future. Even when we feel depleted, under pressure, or afraid, <laughs> Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminds us of the importance of speaking and acting. He shared silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Imagine a time when it was hard to speak up. And yet you did. My hope is that you felt relief afterward. Sometimes taking a risk has consequences. Or fear consequences. And we shy away from this vulnerability. Through our faith, through our trust in God, we are empowered to speak and act on behalf of and for the sake of this community and the world.
Trinity is rising out of the pandemic, the wildfires, and ministry transition. It is so exciting to be watching and witnessing how we all are building on the good work of those who have gone before us and imagining new and creative ways of being the body of Christ in action. I've shared this before, and I'm going to continue saying This week, I met with a colleague who is in her own transition. She's like, it's my last sermon. I don't really know what to say. And we reminded one another how God was present in that parish before she arrived. How God will continue to be present in that parish after she departs. And the presence of God will go with her wherever she may be going next. Before God formed us in our mother's womb, God knew us. God is with us. We receive the gift and the benefit when folks come here because they bring their experiences and giftedness and love of God here. And one of those gifts, I'm going to do a, a quick commercial. We're doing the direct, we're updating the directory. If you'd like a photo, updated photo, one of our newest people that happens to also be on the profile committee is Catherine. She will gladly take your picture. I would gladly receive a new photo of you in the directory. Gray hair is beautiful. <laughs> Other examples have grown out of the way that the hospitality committee is dreaming up activities. And the welcome team has recently formed and has ideas of how we are going to be more welcoming. Y'all are the ones that we've been waiting for, and y'all are getting busy. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And I have no idea what ideas will come forth at the calendar planning meeting today. You have a voice. You have the ability to bring forth your ideas. I want you to look at the bulletin board. That porcelain bowl, they used kintsugi, which is the Japanese art of repair and restoration. When a piece of broken porcelain is mended, the cracks are outlined with gold leaf, drawing attention to its new form and creating a more beautiful piece which is stronger than before it was broken. Stronger than it was before it was broken. This is not unlike the post-traumatic growth which was developed in the 1990s. The theory states that following adversity or crisis, people often relationships, worldview, or other personal areas. Our hardships, our personal and communal lives, as much as we don't want them and wouldn't wish them on anyone else, can strengthen us to be more compassionate, more more empathetic, and welcoming to others. You may have been that child standing at the door 
waiting to get out the door while you continue to get instruction. You may have wanted to walk out of the classroom when the professor continued sharing things. There may be other moments in which there was an opportunity to learn and you wanted to walk away. And you remained. And you heard. And you learned. That news, that information, may have saved your life. And the one who calls you continually into this season of learning that is lifelong is our Savior. He calls us to learn again and again. And Jesus reminds us not to be afraid, not to be afraid as we engage with others. For us to receive all of these gifts and hold them within, is a disservice to humanity. In the words of Howard Thurman, there is no limit to the power that may be released through you.
dissolve into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world, responding to your mercy. Expansive God, you bring, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another. That differences need not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O oh God. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. You play and too long. Of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O oh God. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are the source of healing and thirst for relief and comfort. Grant your tonic peace to the, all who are suffering, especially those on our prayer list, the Reverend uh, Morgan Silbach, and the names we say aloud or silently. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers of God and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise and acknowledge his name 
But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. O Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Your own image, 
and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care and that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. To Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friend and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ended, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to him and said, Drink this, all of my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death, we now present to you from your bread and wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, May we be so bold as to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
east and west, from north and south. People will come and take their places at the banquet in the kingdom of God. Come now. Who invites you to meet him here in this place?
love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Um, Carolyn, did you want to come forward? You don't have any? Yeah. Yeah. things that they're looking at. The final revisions of the profile in hopes of approving it so it can go to the diocese office so it can get signed off on. And the other important piece is um, the executive committee from those who step forward to serve, to serve on the search committee, um, the best will be voting on those individuals as well. So process is moving along. We're getting excited about that. Um, also excited to um, Orchid Child is Victoria's book. One more opportunity to um, hear her speak about it. If you have not yet, um, it is compelling um, to hear how this piece of work came together. Um, and if for any reason you can't um, get access to a book, or it would be nice to have a book to read, you can borrow mine. I can lend it to you. I want it back. <laughs> uh, as mentioned, the calendar planning meeting is um, at 11.30 today. And um, if, if you can't stay, you've got enough time to walk over to the parish hall and write down your idea on the whiteboard. We take those seriously. Like, I actually check things off as we talk about them. So that's an important thing. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I think those are the announcements. I want to invite anyone who happens to be visiting with us today who would like to stand up and say where you are from to do so at this time. I want to thank all of you. I'm from St. Cindy's Parish in Oregon. Oh. Thank you.
We know that we want her luggage to go with her <laughs> and that she returns here safely in October. Grant her your grace and peace. Amen. 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 All right, Ken and Merrill, I'm thinking anniversary. anniversary. Do you want to say how many years? 45. 45. 45. <laughs> So let us bless this couple. Gracious God, we ask you to be with Ken and Merrill as they set up, celebrate 45 years of this union. Years filled with joy and frivolity. Years that have had edges of pain and consternation. And yet, the joy that they share one with another, the gifts that they share with this parish, and with the wider community continue to enrich them that they continue to turn toward one another as they turn toward you for health for safety for assurance knowing that all promises come in and through your son amen, amen. <laughs> all right this is a hard one I'd like to invite the Bunn family to come forward. Daniel was my first visual. And she stayed. <laughs> Believe it or not. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Um, Elizabeth has been faithful with the um, videography, right there. <laughs> the boys grew up in this place and um, have been a blessing to have here. For those who are unaware, Rubicor, Close. Rubicon. Rubicon. Yes. Oh, Rubicon, like the river. Yes. Is moving their offices to Salem. Which means that it makes sense for the Bunn family to move near Salem. This is the last time that you will all be here worshiping. Don't start that. What? As parishioners. As parishioners. We can come back and worship as visitors, can. and you can embarrass us by making us stand up. <laughs> and say, hi, I'm Phil. I'm from St. Paul's in Salem, you know, yeah, that whole thing. And, and the thing that y'all need to know is St. Paul's in Salem is where you grew up. First Communion, Acolyte, third verse, so I'm going. Um, and, and, your, and your boys are going to, like... Oh, uh, they're going to follow in the footsteps. They're going to follow in the footsteps, goes. whether they want to or not. Yep. Um, <laughs> and I'm blanking. One of you is George, and I'm blanking on the other name. George and Robert. 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 Yeah. George and Robert. That sounds a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> George and Robert. Okay. So if you are so moved, put your hands up to bless them. Daniel, Elizabeth, George, and Daniel, and Robert, as you leave our parish, we wish to bid you farewell. From John, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Y'all have exemplified that light of life in this place, and as you move north, you will be a shimmering light there. It was in holy baptism that our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. When you came here, we rejoiced to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. In this community, we have come to know and share in God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in St. Paul and Salem. United with us in the body of Christ and the mission we share.
because we're still part of the same diocese. So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servants, Daniel, Elizabeth, George, and Robert, who have enriched this parish and shared their gifts with us. Now bless and preserve them at this time of transition. Day by day, guide them and give them what is needed, friends to cheer their way, and a clear vision of what of that which you are now calling them. By your Holy Spirit, be present in their pilgrimage, that they may travel with one another the way that is the truth, the life, and the way. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.